Welcome to Electro Online. Here's our second example of how to solve a catenary problem. We have a cable which is hanging under its own weight. It has a sag. The sag is equal to 10 meters right here. And the total distance between support points is 20 meters. We have a cable that has a weight of 20 newtons per meter. And we're trying to find the force required to pull on the cable this way. In other words, we're looking for the force that is equal to the maximum tension here because the pulley changes the direction of the tension or the direction of the force, but the force here required to pull the cable inward will be equal to the maximum tension at that particular location. Notice all the equations we may need, and we're going to start with this equation right here, y equals c times the hyperbolic cosine of x over c. The first thing we're going to do is replace y, which is the sum of these two distances, by h minus c. So we get h minus c is equal to c times the hyperbolic cosine of x over c. Remember that this distance here is the distance y. And then if we divide both sides by c, we get h over c minus 1 equals the hyperbolic cosine of x over c. And now what we're trying to do is we're trying to find values, well, we're trying to find the value of c, and we can only do that in an iterative process, just like we saw in the previous video. What we're going to do is we're going to guess for particular values for c. We're then going to calculate the hyperbolic cosine of x over c, and then we're going to calculate h over c minus 1. And let's see here, is that correct? No, it's not. Y is not H minus C, it's H plus C, right? Y is the, the sum of the two, so that should be H plus C, this should be plus one, and this should be plus one. All right. So what values would work? Well, let's start off with a value of 10. So we're going to find set C equal to 10, equal to the sag. That may or may not be correct. Let's find out. So if C is equal to 10, what is the hyperbolic cosine of X over C? Now remember that X is half the total distance between the support points. X equals 10. So we have the hyperbolic cosine of 1. Take the hyperbolic cosine of that is 1.543. 1 1.543. And then h, which is 10, divided by c, which is 10, that's 1 plus 1, which is 2. And notice that's not quite what we wanted. So let's pick a smaller value. Let's pick c equals 9. So we have 10 divided by 9. And we take the hyperbolic cosine of that. We get 1.683. So we're getting closer to this value. Let's see what we get here. So we have 10 divided by 9 and plus 1, and that's 2.111. So we're getting closer, but not quick enough. So let's do a bigger leap. Let's say c equals 6. So we have 10 divided by 6. Take the hyperbolic cosine of that. We get 2.742. 2.742. And then here we have 10 divided by 6 plus 1. And we get 2.667. Notice we leaped over the value, went too far. Hmm. So, well, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's try 6.1. 6.1 and see what we get. So 10 divided by 6.1. And we take the hyperbolic cosine of that. We get 2.673. 2.673. And here we take 10 divided by 6.1 plus 1 equals 2.639, 2.639. So we're getting closer, but not quite there yet. Let's try 6.2. And we get 10 divided by 6.2. Take the hyperbolic cosine. That gives us 2.608. And here we get 10 divided by 6.2 plus 1 equals 2.613. Let's see here. Now it's too, is it too small? Yes, we were bigger. Now we're smaller. We gotta go down again a little bit. How about 6.19? All right. 
So we have 10 divided by 6.19. Take the hyperbolic cosine, we get 2.615. And here we get 10 divided by 6.19 plus 1, and we get 2.616. That's getting very close. I think I'm pretty happy with that result. With other words, we get virtually the correct value when we let C equal to 6.19 meters. So we have a sag of 10 meters and a value for C of 6.19 meters. Now we're able to calculate the maximum tension at B, which will be equal to the force over here. And where do we find that? Here's the T, so we have T sub B is equal to W times Y. Of course, that's the weight per unit length, and Y is going to be the sum of H plus C. Y each equals H plus C, which is equal to 10 meters plus 6.19 meters. In other words, Y at B is equal to 16.19 meters. Now we come over here, and the tension at B is equal to the weight per unit length, 20 newtons per meter, multiplied times y, which is 16.19 meters. 16.19 times 20 equals, we have a tension at B is equal to 323.8 newtons. Now, I'm going to use the opportunity to show you one more thing. Let's first find the tension at the lowest point on the cable, T sub naught. We can say that T sub naught is equal to W times C, which is equal to 20 newtons per meter, times C, and C was 6.19 6 uh, meters, 6.19 meters. And so T sub naught is going to be equal to 20 times 6.19 equals 123.8 newtons. That's the tension at the lowest point on the cable. That's the tension at the attached point. What about the difference between those two? What do we get when we take T minus T sub naught? Well, T is the weight per unit length times Y, and T sub naught is equal to the weight per unit length times C. If we now factor out a weight per unit length, weight times y minus c. Well, what's y minus c equal to? We take the full distance y, we subtract c from it, we get the sag h. In other words, the difference between the maximum tension at the attached point and the minimum tension at the lowest point on the cable is equal to the weight per unit length times the sag in the cable. And there's another very nice equation for us to be able to use in the future, so if we ever want to know the difference between the highest and the lowest tension, the tension at the bottom of the cable versus the tension at the attached point, it's equal to the weight per unit length times the amount of the sag in the cable. And so now we have some interesting things. Now let's quickly work that out and see if we get the difference. So that is, uh, let's see here, 20 newtons per meter times 10 meters, which is equal to 200 newtons. And sure enough, the difference between the highest and the lowest tension in the cable is indeed exactly 200 newtons. And that's how that's done.